Energy X is on a mission to shake up the global lithium game. Backed by General Motors and POSCO, uh, this Austin-based company says its tech can pull battery-grade lithium straight from underground brine and doing it cleaner and faster. CEO Teague Egan, a former early Tesla investor, now leads major projects in Texas, Arkansas and Chile, aiming to power the world's EV transition. He joins me now. Teague, thanks very much indeed for talking to us. Thanks for having me, Devin. Good to see you. Great. Listen, I want to start with Lone Star. I mean, Energy X's flagship lithium initiative in the southern U.S. What's your current production timeline for Lone Star Lithium? And when will we see revenue there, T? Yeah. So we just made a big acquisition um, that added 35,000 acres to our land holdings, bringing us up to 50,000 acres, which gives us a really sizable position. Uh, to start working on production. And we're building a demonstration plant currently right now that will be producing around 100 tons per annum of lithium. That's still not nearly commercial volumes, uh, but that gives us a really good indication to go build the commercial plant, which we have targeted for the first train in 2028 of 12,500 tons, followed by three additional trains by 2030 to equal 50,000 tons per annum. Yeah, you're doing all of this at a time when you look a lot of eyebrows on lithium. It's been up and down. People have been guessing where it's going. What's your take on lithium demand and how it's shaping up in the near future? So I think about it where the price is actually somewhat separate from the demand. Of course, we have seen very volatile prices over the last handful of years. The price went up to $80,000 a ton which wasn't good for anybody. You can't sell affordable electric vehicles at that price. And now we're seeing it down at around $10,000 a ton. Uh, But that aside, the overall demand is still increasing. Um, Just last year, we were at 17 million electric vehicles produced. Uh, And that's up from, you know, it was 500,000 electric vehicles in 2015. So we're seeing huge uh, increases in electric vehicle production, which inevitably means more lithium demand. There's also other categories like energy storage systems. And I am a big believer in humanoid robots. I think we're going to see, you know, billions of humanoid robots by 2040, 2050, uh, which will all drive immense lithium demand moving forward. All right, let, let's take this back to the site now, the smackover formation, right? Emerging lithium hotspot in the U.S. South. Uh, can you explain why this is ge- this geological basin is so important for your long-term strategy? And I'm, I'm curious to know who's funding it. Yeah, so Energy X started as a uh, technology company where we were producing what's called direct lithium extraction or DLE technology to help existing resource owners improve their their processes and methods of extraction. Uh, So the first five years of the company, from 2018 to 2023, we were exclusively focused on technology. And during that time, we were assessing all of the resource owners really globally, uh, mostly throughout South America and the Lithium Triangle, but also North America. we looked at all the different deposits in uh, the United States, in California, in Utah, Nevada, um, up in the Northeast, uh, the South, the Southeast. And ultimately, we settled on the Smackover Formation being the best lithium deposit in the United States. Now, I think this was validated when ExxonMobil made their big acquisition, their first venture into lithium. They acquired 100,000 acres in Arkansas. Um, and that kind of created the gold rush. And now, you know, a lot of Chevron just made a 100,000 acre acquisition. So we're surrounded by Exxon and Chevron. And this deposit has some of the highest grades of lithium in the US. Uh, it also has some of the lowest impurities. And it's a manageable brine, the temperature uh, isn't crazy high. It's it's pretty moderate. So it makes it um, uh, what we believe to be the most accessible lithium deposit in the U.S. And it just so happens it's kind of right here in our backyard in Texas. 
Yep, and what's not in the backyard is, is chili, right? I mean, your black giant project. It's ambitious. Uh, what regulatory permitting hurdles remain there? And I mean, I'm interested to know how exposed are you to political risk there, if any? Yeah, so the reason that we decided to pursue two projects in parallel, the U.S. project Lone Star, which is Texas, Arkansas, or the smack over formation, and, and Chile, um, is just that exact reason, the, the mm -hmm. potential foreign country risk. And the best lithium deposits in the world are in what's called the Lithium Triangle, which is the high Andean mountain range, um, the salt flats that exist up at this three, four, five thousand 5,000 meters, um, which is northern Chile, northern Argentina, and southern Bolivia. And uh, Argentina started seeing a huge influx of foreign investment um, because Chile had previously had a law prohibiting any new entrants other than the main two that were there, Albemarle and SQM, from developing new lithium projects. Bolivia is kind of all state owned and nobody really wants to go there. Um, but Chile saw all this new investment going into Argentina and they said, hold on, wait a second. We want to participate in some of that. So they've recently created what's called the National Lithium Strategy, which has created a framework to allow uh, new private and public companies to come invest and exploit the lithium of Chile. Um, now, there is a permitting uh, process in place, which we're partaking in. Um, we feel like the new administration that's coming in, or, or there'll be a new administration voted in in November will be uh, very pro-business and almost accelerate this national lithium strategy, uh, making it easier to get the permits than uh, it has been over the past year. But it's a new strategy. And the country of Chile is really putting a lot of effort into having new investment in new companies build lithium projects in the country. All right, let's talk takeoff or offtake. You know, does GM or POSCO have guaranteed supply agreements or are you still shopping your product? So GM and POSCO led our Series B investment round uh, back in 2022, 2023. Uh, that was a $50 million uh, private placement into the company. And with that investment, they got the first right of offer for a large percentage of our offtake. Uh, so as we start developing these projects, we have to go to GM and POSCO and say, hey, do you guys want this lithium first? And then we negotiate um, you know, what, what that deal would look like. Uh, we still do have a sizable volume that we can shop to others. And we're talking to you know, the, the, whole, the whole list of electric vehicle companies, battery companies, and cathode companies that the lithium directly goes into in the next processing step. Um, but yeah, it's a very, it's a very nice structure that gives us a built in customer. Um, and just based on the demand of lithium and the price that we, we can offer because we have the lowest cost, therefore we can offer the lowest price. Uh, it, it's a really favorable situation. I mean, Teague, before I let you go, is Energy X planning to go public? And if so, what would that timeline and structure look like? <laughs> Devin, the most asked question that I get by anybody. <laughs> um, so I'm not, I'm not even legally allowed to kind of give um, a, a direct answer on that question. Uh, but I can say that Energy X does not want to go public until we are commercially producing lithium. Um, we don't want to be one of these kind of speculative uh, publicly listed companies in the battery supply chain that doesn't have commercial revenues yet, uh, which are obviously generated by commercializing our first trains of lithium production. And uh, with Black Giant, that is targeted at least for the end of 2027, Black Giant being our project in Chile and then follow the next year by our targets for Lone Star. So if we were to think about that and maybe some you know, earlier acquisition happened before, um, you know, saying that that didn't happen before, that, that, would, that might be a timeframe that we would consider uh, a public offering. 
Yep, no, fair enough. Uh, compelling initiative. Uh, well, thanks very much indeed. CEO Teague Egan there, uh, the uh, Energy X CEO. Appreciate your time. Good to see you, buddy. Thank you.